Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that hour, Jesus rejoiced in the Holy Spirit and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and understanding and revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Then turning to the disciples, he said privately, Blessed are the eyes which see what you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings desired to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, according to United Nations data in 2020, South Africa has the biggest HIV epidemic in the world. South Africa has the biggest HIV epidemic in the world. 7.7 .7 million people living with HIV. 19% of infections being between 15 and 49 years of age. One in five people lives with HIV in South Africa. One in five people. How many people do you meet on a daily basis? How many people do you run into in your local shopping center? How many people come to your practice for treatment or counseling or chiropractic? How many people come to the reception at your office? One in five lives with HIV in South Africa. Chances are you've met many of the infected and never even knew it. Today, in this first week of Advent, we celebrate World AIDS Day. And in the midst of another terrifying pandemic, the COVID pandemic, it's easy to forget that there are other diseases out there, other silent killers affecting millions of people in our country and around the world. But how? How does that affect us? Especially if we don't have any experience of anyone with or dying from HIV. Well, we give our kids sex education, or we let the schools do it on our behalf. And because we're good Catholics, we get into a moral bind over the whole use a condom, don't use a condom issue. I'm not going to get into that here, certainly not on social media. I'd like to ask today, though, in light of World AIDS Day, how does AIDS affect us deeply and spiritually? Because you may have met somebody with AIDS, you may have run into them, but you don't have any experience of them because they're not exactly going to tell you, are they? It's not something you really share, is it? How does AIDS affect us deeply 
and spiritually as Christians, as Catholics? To answer that, we have to look at today's gospel. In the gospel today, Jesus says, Blessed are the eyes that see and ears that hear what you have seen and heard. For many desired to see and hear the same, but did not. Jesus is saying, each and every one of us who have come to know him, whether it be the apostles who experienced him in person long ago, or we who experience him through scripture and the sacrament are blessed. We experience the Son of God, and that experience, if it is a legitimate one, changes us. We as Christians, we as Catholics, we come to know Christ, to feel Christ, to have Christ within us, and to live Christ. You cannot experience Jesus as a Christian, as a Catholic, and remain the same. Jesus changes us. That experience of Christ, that lived Christian experience of the Son of God, makes us grateful. But also, more infinitely aware, as Jesus was, of our responsibilities towards one another. As followers of Jesus the Christ, we are called to respond with compassion and action on behalf of true justice. We become, as he was, as he is, intimately connected to and concerned about others. We are called to fight ignorance, discrimination, and stigma. We are called to be like Jesus, who cared for the sick, who dined with sinners, who reached out to the marginalized in his community. We are invited to open our eyes and to open our hearts to the lost, to the derided, to the lonely, to the forgotten, to the sick. If we are not moved by suffering in any form, and today specifically on this day in the form of AIDS, if we are not moved by suffering, then Jesus has not changed us. We have become cold and callous and, dare I say, cruel. Jesus was moved by suffering every day. Jesus was moved by suffering. Jesus was compassion. Jesus was mercy. Jesus was justice. Jesus was love. For God is love, and those who dwell in love dwell in God, and God in them. Jesus says, Philip, how can you say, show us the Father? Those who have seen me have seen the Father. Those who have seen me have seen the God of love. Those who have seen me have seen love. Those who know me know love. And we must be these things too, brothers and sisters. Pray for the sick. Pray for the suffering. Make them a part of your daily prayer. The nameless millions. The ones you encounter every day suffering from this the ones you encounter but never experience because of intolerance, because of stigma, because of rejection. Support the marginalized, the disenfranchised, the poor, those on the fringes. Do not entertain 
discrimination, intolerance, and ignorance in your homes. Contribute via works of mercy and charity to the care of others. Or as the English say, even in these difficult times, put your money where your mouth is. Christians come and pray. Catholics come and pray. And our prayers are beautiful and our prayers are loud and our prayers reach the ears of God. But it can't stop here. It doesn't end in this building. We go out into that world. And we must take action. Do something. Give something. Show the world the face of Christ. Where is our nearest AIDS hospice? Do you know? Maybe today on World AIDS Day, it would be a good time to find out. Today, we are called to think of and pray for those suffering with AIDS. Don't teach only the practicalities of how to avoid infection, condoms and abstinence. Teach the spiritual fundamentals to your children of caring for the infected, of valuing human life and the human person. Don't be okay with just the practical side of it. Teach them the spiritual beauty of valuing the human person human life, of loving the infected, of supporting them, not judging them or condemning them, loving them and supporting them is what Jesus did, and it is what Jesus would be doing today. Amen.